Welcome to Machu Picchu, one of the seven wonders of the world. Alright, so we've now made it onto the train after a lot of rushing around to get here on time. We're on the train, it's just about two hours to get to the base of Machu Picchu. And we're actually gonna be going there tomorrow morning. We're about midday now, so we're able to go in this car right here for a relatively low price. It's like 65 bucks to get this one. And if you wanted to do this like earlier in the day, like most people do at 6 a.m., it would have cost you somewhere of like 100, 150 dollars. So if you go midday and then you go the next morning like we are, you can save some money. So tomorrow morning we're gonna go to Machu Picchu. It's pretty cool because we have this open air cart right now. Like you can look outside the window, you can see the snow capped mountains in the background, all the farmers and everything. So I think it was worth coming and getting the 360 degree car so we can kind of just like look around, take pictures and all that. So we've just gone off the train here at the bottom of Machu Picchu. It is called Agua Calientes or hot waters. Uh, there's hot water springs around here, but I wanted to show this little town because no one ever really shows this town when they're going to Machu Picchu. Usually they just take the train and then show the top of Machu Picchu. But this little town down here is really beautiful. I wanted to kind of show what it was like to, to go here and then get a bus ticket because no one shows exactly how to do it. So this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get around and go up to Machu Picchu, the full thing. Okay. Good to go. So essentially it is $24 a person, round trip, anytime, tomorrow. So we can go up at, we're gonna go up at 5.30, the first one, come back, I don't know, 1 p.m., I don't know, it depends how long we're gonna be up there. You can be up there as long as you want, really. Our time to go in is the first time, which is 6 a.m. We're gonna get the bus just over here, about 100 meters in the morning. I'm told that we need to start lining up around 4 a.m. to get the 5.30 a.m. bus, because there's gonna be a line down the road in the morning, which you'll see. So we're just about to get some lunch right now because this is like one of the best restaurants based on how it looks. There's like a 360 degree view of the town. I take that back, it's probably like 180. <laughs> but it, I mean, it's incredible. Look, we have this, this music playing down below here. We have the, the water rushing below us. We have everyone walking around. It's very vibrant and sunny. It's just a beautiful town. I'm glad we came here a day early. All right, good morning guys. It is now just about 4.15 a.m. We've come down to the bus stop. There's already a line of probably close to 50 people here. Uh, we're about halfway through that line right now, waiting for the bus. So right next to where we came in on the train over here, just across the street, is where you get the Machu Picchu bus in the morning. So this line you can see behind me, it's gonna be much longer when the bus actually leaves in an hour from now. So it seems like there's a lot of people who are trying to get up here very early in the morning. So you're gonna wanna come down about 4, 4.15, if you want to be in the front of the line and be on one of the first buses up. Uh, Machu Picchu does open at 6 a.m. and the first bus is about 5.30. So once we get up there, we'll have to wait in front of this gate and then uh, we'll be one of the first ones in, hopefully. So now, just at about 5.20 a.m. and we're about to get on the bus. You can see the line goes entirely up this road and wraps around. In just the, the 40, 50 minutes we've been here, the line has gotten exponentially bigger. All the shops have opened. People are selling uh, snacks, coffee, water, all kinds of things like that. And after a very bumpy and windy 20 minute bus ride, we've made it to the base of Machu Picchu where we have to now wait until 6 a.m. when it actually officially opens. You can see all the buses in the background coming in. There's like five buses that all came in at once and now we have to line up and just kind of wait here. We have raced up here. We were one of the very first ones up here. So we came up the red path here and we're now one of the first ones to this spot which is very, very packed throughout the entire day. We rest up the mountain, so that's why I'm out of breath. I gotta say, this is the best view. There's no one walking around yet. You can see the alpacas, the llamas down there. It is just a beautiful sight. And the mist is now about to cover it. So we got lucky we're here because probably in half an hour, you may not be able to see it as this like mist and fog rolls in. 
But the thing is, once you come here, you, uh, you have to walk one straight line, so you can't go back. So if you come here first, this is like the first spot, you're gonna wanna make sure that you, you take all the pictures you need up here first, which is the most popular shot of Machu Picchu, because once you go down here, you have to follow the route back and you can't come back in. So you know, that's something important to know when you're coming here to Machu Picchu. And if you guys wanna know what it costs exactly to do Machu Picchu, I'll have a link down below where I have a new adventure newsletter coming out every month, and I'm gonna break down the cost of doing Machu Picchu, what it costs to come here and do Peru all together. And every month, I'm gonna be breaking down all my costs while I travel, so you know exactly what it costs me to do everything that I do, all the places I stay, trains, airplanes, and all of that. So check that out in the link down below. One of the interesting facts about Machu Picchu is that they didn't have wheels to bring up all these stones and they were cut so precisely with a technique called ashlar so you couldn't even fit a uh, knife or a needle in between them. They're so, so tight and cut precisely just like all the Incan ruins we've seen before this. Alright guys, and to my right you can see Machu Picchu over here. This is the Incan Empire and just right here you can see this is the Citadel and the Sun Temple. Over here is the giant mountain. It's really cool. Uh, make sure you get a picture while you can because uh, it's not going to be here for very long. <laughs> Every, everyone right now just stop taking pictures because it is a complete whiteout of fog within 30 seconds. It is crazy how fast that moved in. So a lot of times early in the morning and late at night there's a mist that kind of rolls through here as you can see right now and uh, they actually believed that it was spirits and then they would take away guides. So sometimes there have been quoted guides gone missing and they believe that the spirits have taken them. And supposedly the locals sleep on mirrors or reflective foil, supposedly to keep away the spirits. So back in the 1500s, the Spanish Empire defeated the Incan Empire and they destroyed many of the temples around as well as statues, leaving only ruins. One of which was Alitan Tambo, which we saw in the last vlog. That one was torn down and there's only ruins left. So now you can see that the mist is completely gone. It was in and out within a minute and a half, not even two minutes, not even two. The mist was all the way through here and evaporated into the sky. And now you have clear Machu Picchu again. So in the native language of Quechua, uh, Machu Picchu means old peak or old mountain. And so we're on the old mountain right now. It's just now about 9 a.m. and I thought this place would be actually even more packed. I thought it would be worse. Uh, you know, I thought there'd be a lot more people all over. And while there are a lot of people, it's actually pretty cool because the way that they have it is it's kind of in waves. So we were at the 6 a.m. one, and so they only let in a certain amount of people uh, between that block. And then it's like, I think nine, and then 11, something like that. And so when you first come in, you're not joined by thousands of people. It's maybe just like 150 people. So you definitely can get your shots if you come here early. So it's cool finally getting to see Machu Picchu. This is something that I've wanted to see for years. I'm sure many of you guys and a lot of people had know about this place. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. So actually being here and like checking it off is something so cool, especially since it's like something that isn't, I mean, it's accessible, but it's not like super easy. It's not like you can just stroll up to the Coliseum. This like you take a bus and then you gotta like hike through the mountains and just getting here from the main city is not an easy feat in itself. So coming here is uh, it's pretty cool. It's interesting how even here in Machu Picchu we see these like these little uh, terraces or levels and for this one it was actually built to support the entire structure of itself so that if one of these like terraces kind of collapsed it wouldn't collapse the entire thing. It's also considered a uh, marvel of engineering at the time. It's pretty cool because everywhere we go we always see these like you know, these little terraces which were also used for agriculture and farming. Well guys, it seems we've come to the end of Machu Picchu pretty much. Right now we're just kind of going through uh, the remaining houses and temples. This is actually the temple of the condor and there's one of these is like the temple of the three doors. It's got these huge doors where you essentially just look out. It's pretty cool but uh, after you see the main viewpoint up there you just kind of walk around in this one circle and then you exit. So we've pretty much seen everything here at Machu Picchu. We're gonna go see if there's anything left over here but uh, I think that's pretty much it. But you guys, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're new here, click that subscribe button as well as check the link out down below for my brand new adventure newsletter where I break down the cost of trips like this and what it takes to get here. But other than that, Rogue Nation, explore the world. Follow me. You gotta hold your hand, Cody. <laughs> <laughs>
now in 4K Ultra HD, Dolby 5.1 surround sound, Blu-ray, and, and 3D. <laughs> <laughs>